stories in today's video. 1. Update, my 26F, boyfriend, 29M, insinuated that our relationship will end. 2. My 19F, biological fathers, 45 meters wife, 40F, said she wants me to, leave them alone. 3. Update, my, 32, partner, 47, became really pushy about s asterisk x after hearing about my past. Is there any healthy way of making this relationship work? Original I read all the comments but I disagreed with them about splitting the rent and I knew the commenters were right so I didn't engage with them. I knew that my reluctance to share rent based on income was coming from a place of insecurity. We had a talk about where our relationships is going and he said he saw us getting married and starting a family. We have talked about this before and we both want to get married and have a family. I then brought up his comment and he got a bit defensive but then he told me that he couldn't shake the feeling that I would end up breaking up with him. He feels that he may be too boring for me and that I would leave him. He said this was the happiest he has been in a relationship and he wanted to hold on as long as he could and make as many good memories before it ended. He looked so scared talking about this. It broke my heart. I re asterisk short him that I have no plans to leave him. I love him. This is the best relationship I have been in. I don't want to leave him. I promised him that if anything bothers me or makes me unhappy that I will bring it up. I think this is not really about me honestly. His parents were success-oriented tyrants who only gave him crumbs of affection when he did something exceptional. They suck. He is planning to go to therapy. We also later talked about me feeling insecure about my contribution and he has a long and solid career ahead of him. It is pretty likely that inequality between our incomes will continue for grow. We were able to come to a compromise and he will contribute more to the rent but it will not be fully proportional but it will still help me pay down my debt faster. I just have to make peace with this honestly. I love what I do and he loves his career too. He is always going to out-earn me. We TLDR, we talked it out. Did out, did out, did out, did out, did out, did out, did out. Okay, this is gonna be kinda long because the amount of drama leading up to this is ridiculous. Usually I'd just summarize, but the context is important. I'm gonna change names and specific locations cause I don't want to get tracked down and found out and stuff. Backstory, it all started a few months before I was even conceived. My biological mother, let's call her Chloe, was engaged to a man who we will call Carl. So Chloe was working at a Walmart while engaged to Carl, and decided to cheat on him with her boss, who we'll call Harold. So Harold had no idea Chloe was engaged until they had been dating for a while, things are going well between them until one day Harold catches Chloe on a date with his best friend. This leads to a big fight where Chloe hits Harold and he has to lock her out of the house to protect himself. She calls the police on him, and due to the crappy domestic dispute laws in their state, they both spend the night in jail. Somehow Harold is blamed for the incident and is ordered to take two years of anger management, and decides to never speak to Chloe again. A few weeks later Harold gets a text from one of his friends, telling him that Chloe is pregnant and that Harold is the father. He immediately calls Bush asterisk T, because Chloe is not only engaged to another man who is probably the father, but was also being intimate with many other men. So he brushes it off and forgets about it. A couple months p asterisk ss, and Harold gets a call from an adoption agency saying that they need to talk to him. Chloe has decided to give the baby, hey, that's me, up for adoption, and Harold needs to sign some papers since she put him down as the father. He agrees to sit down with someone from the agency, but only to talk to them about the claims. So he meets a representative and tells them that he doesn't think he's the father. The guy from the agency goes, oh, great. Just sign here then, and hands Harold the doc asterisk meant to surrender his rights as a father. Harold signs them and doesn't hear anything from him again. Meanwhile with Chloe, she has the baby with her fiancé in the room, which gives me infinite respect for him, and the baby is adopted three days later. Unfortunately, the baby, who is me, was born with a slew of genetic illnesses, and I end up in the hospital only 20 days later because my kidney was collapsing in on itself. To save time, let's just say that growing up I spent a disgusting amount of time in the hospital. My health was in a perpetual downward spiral, and every time we found a solution to one problem, a new one would pop up and wreak havoc on my tiny body. It all came to a head one day when I was 13, when I was in so much pain that my doctors thought I was having a heart attack. I wasn't, but hadn't been diagnosed yet, so they had no clue. 
So after being told by my doctors in the hospital that I had a heart attack, my adopted dad, who we'll call Marcus, freaked out and finally reached out to Harold for the first time. He asked for his medical records so that they could better asterisk SSESS the situation and decide what to do. Here is where the problem started. The first incident, so while I was busy being cripplingly ill, Harold had forgotten all about me and started a new life with a woman he met a month after my birth, let's call her Heather because she reminds me of Heather Duke. They had two sons at the time, and Harold hadn't told Heather anything about maybe having another kid. To clarify I wasn't there for this part so I am only telling what I have been told happened. So Heather finds the email that my dad sent to Harold and absolutely loses her mind. She thinks he cheated on her or something, and blocks my dad on Facebook and starts messaging Chloe on Facebook. Now this is where the story gets a little tricky. I have been told two different versions of this event and honestly I'm not 100% sure which one is true, so I'll just tell both. Chloe's version, Heather started sending MSS amount of hate and har SSMENT to Chloe, basically telling her to step off and get away from her man. Heather insisted that Harold wasn't the father, and Chloe was lying. By this point in time Chloe was already married, and had two daughters that she kept, one who belonged to her old fiancé, and one who belonged to her current husband, and had also built a relationship with me. She read me some of the messages that Heather sent during a weekend I was spending with her and my half-sister almost four years later. She said, I quote, her grammar was atrocious, but I didn't think correcting it was the right way to go. Heather's version, Heather reached out to Chloe to talk to her about the situation and what she wanted them to do. Chloe snapped at her and said there was no way that my parents would put me through a paternity test. Because Chloe said that, they decided not to pursue the test. After these communications all contact was lost and my dad lost Harold's cell phone number. The whole interaction ended with no paternity test, and no medical records. Recent events, okay now that that's out of the way, here is what has happened in the last month. So my health has progressively gotten worse and, and I now have to apply for disability if I want to pay for my ungodly amount of medications. The lawyer I hired said that having a full family medical history might be helpful. So I asked my super smart friend to track Harold down so I could contact him. Long story short, I got his number and I left him a voicemail that was basically me just begging him to help me and that I was sorry for intruding on his life, and begging for him not yell at me. He called back after like 20 minutes, and to my extreme surprise he was happy to hear from me. He said that not contacting me was one of the biggest regrets of his life. We cried together on the phone, and I told him about the genetic disorders I have and how I was worried for his kids. He asterisk assured me that they were healthy, and I cried cause I was relieved. We talked throughout the week until eventually he had to fly home from his business trip, and tell his wife what was going on. Needless to say, it did not go well. Heather was pierced and demanded that we limit contact until the results of the paternity test came in. Unfortunately for her, it came back positive and confirmed that I am his daughter. Here is where the story gets sticky again, because I have been told two different versions of what happened during the last week. Harold's version, Harold and Heather got in a big fight and she made him tell her sons what he did. Maybe it was meant to humiliate him, but if so it backfired because his sons were so excited to have a sister. One of them compared me to Shazam I think. Harold left to go on another trip for work, and he and Heather fought right before he left for the airport. He called me while he drove there and told me all of this, and said that he didn't want to lose contact with me again. I was so happy he still wanted me around, but I was sad that I screwed up his family. He told me it wasn't my fault, but I still felt bad. I got Heather's version of events much later, at 11 p.m. when I was trying to eat my ramen. She messaged me on Facebook and claimed that this is what really happened. Heather's version, Harold was unhappy about the test and said that I was too much too fast, but wouldn't tell me that because he didn't want to hurt my feelings. They told their sons and they weren't happy about it either. She told me that Harold hardly has time for his kids, and I was, forcing your way in. Now I am a very sensitive person and have a habit of breaking down over the smallest things because of other stuff that's happened in my past, but that's not relevant right now, which is why I'm very proud of how I handled this. I texted Harold and told him that his wife had contacted me, and within seconds he had called me and asked me to read what she had said. I read it to him and also read the apology I sent to her. He apologized on her behalf and asked if I was okay because I sounded like I was crying, which I was, but I didn't want him to feel bad so I just told him I was fine and I was just tired. 
I asked him what I should do and he told me to just be myself. So I apologized to her again and again while she snapped at me and eventually she stopped and I got to go to bed. Things were quiet after that, and I tried not to message them because I didn't want to get yelled at again. This morning I got diagnosed with severe scoliosis and yesterday with epilepsy, and since those are usually genetic I texted Harold and told him he might want to get his sons tested for it. Apparently this was a bad idea because Heather proceeds to message me and tell me to stop texting them, and that I was not helping their marriage. I tried to explain that I was just trying to help, and asking her to please stop lashing out at me, but she just texted back with, I'm not lashing out. We just want you to leave us alone. I haven't responded back because her message really hurt and I just shut down and fell asleep to cope. I apologized to Harold but he hasn't replied to the text which is making me think that maybe they really do want me to leave them alone, but I also know that Harold told me the exact opposite. My anxiety is having a field day and I have absolutely no idea what to do. My main goal in this situation is to preserve my relationship with Harold, and try to get Heather to like me. What do I do? TLDR, biological dad's wife doesn't want me around at all and keeps telling me things that I know aren't true because biological dad already told me the truth. Now she is claiming that they want me to leave them alone, even though he told me he wanted to build a relationship. Original post TLDR, my 32M partner, 47M, became very pushy s asterisk Zuli after hearing about some sketchy past experiences I had. He said this was because he realized he had 8K asterisk NK, and he continued being pushy even though I told him I was uncomfortable. Update, I broke up with him. Thank you so much to the people who responded. I was really messed up about the whole thing and I was M asterisk s sibly second guessing myself, so the advice really helped a lot. I thought I would post an update in case anyone has any advice on how to deal with the aftermath, I'm a bit of a mess. I broke up with N last night. It went okay I guess? Like he didn't get angry or confrontational and he did seem to listen to what I was saying. It was hard though, he was really upset and apologetic and said a lot of stuff I would have loved to have heard in the past few months of the relationship. It would have been so easy to believe him, but the fact is he wasn't bothered at all until I said I wanted to leave. He is saying he will respect my decision, but has sent a fair few texts since talking about how much he hates himself, things he wishes he did differently, using a lot of pet names, I told him I needed some space but if he doesn't listen I might need to block him. I'm a bit of a wreck and my mental health feels like it's taken am asterisk ssive backslide over the past few months, I've lost a lot of weight, I've been drinking more, I'm jumpy as hell, I'm having horrible nightmares every night. I'm trying very hard to avoid dealing with this breakup in a destructive way, but it's difficult because I have a lot of sh asterisk tty feelings that I have no idea what to do with. So any advice about healthy ways of dealing with a breakup would be helpful.